Welcome. All right, guys. My name is Marcos Garcia. Today we have Trung Win on Conversations with One Percenters. And I appreciate you giving me the time of your day today and jumping on the podcast and looking forward to an in depth conversation with you and kind of seeing um, your journey, what you're about, and, and what you do. Fantastic. I look forward to sharing with you guys. Perfect. So Trung, we have a new ritual started yesterday where we right. where we get the podcast guest to ask the first question for the next guest. And I okay. have the I have the question from yesterday for you, but before that, what question would you like to ask the next guest without knowing who it is? A guy, girl? Ooh. What would you like to ask? Hmm, that's a great question. Let me think. Um When was there a moment where you were very close to giving up on mm. your journey? And what was it in that moment that made you not? That's so actually, that would be my question. That's a very powerful question. Perfect. Love it. That's the question yes. I'll be asking the first guest next week. But we have a question for you. All right. Let's do um, this. So the last guest, he asked, um, what is your dharma? So um, I, I didn't even know what a dharma was, but apparently it's Eastern philosophies and it has to do with like your why, why you're here on earth. Like what's the reason that you believe you are put on this earth for other than just making money? That's where we're, he wants to dive deeper. Other than just making money, like why do you think you were put on this earth? You know, honestly, um, money wasn't ever even a thought. To me, money has always been a means to an end. Uh, for me, I grew up uh, struggling and, you know, we were refugees uh, coming into America from Vietnam when I was young and we grew up really, really poor. And I feel that entrepreneurship has really changed my life. Um, and for me, my mission is to share what I've learned over the last 24 years in entrepreneurship to really teach the next generation and enable people that would not otherwise be, you know, have access to the education because schools we know right now don't really teach the ability to really make money that you get a degree, but you, you definitely don't actually learn how to make money in a business of any kind. And there's not many schools for that to teach you true entrepreneurship and definitely not for the people that are underprivileged like I was. And so, you know, my mission is to educate uh, people like that with my nonprofit eventually. Uh, right now, I'm doing coaching to help people, you know, have learn entrepreneurial skills. But eventually, I would love to create a nonprofit where I give inner city people that otherwise couldn't afford, you know, a coach of any kind to have access to entrepreneurship so that they can change their family, change the, the trajectory of their lives instead of just working for somebody all the time, but create a means to, you know, change their family history forever. So that's what I feel like I've been here for. I love teaching. I have a gift for connecting with people, but also have a mission to help people just like myself back in the day, um, you know, get a leg up on life. So, yep, that's my mission. Powerful. That's very, very powerful. Take us, take us back in the day. Like, what was that like? You said like, like uh, run us through, I would say the beginning before entrepreneurship. Well, I'm mean, short of, um, I, I grew up in a, you know, when we grew up in California, um, you know, my parents uh, never got an education, so they worked, you know, anything and everything to, you know, my mom was maybe working 14 hours a day just to make ends meet. And so I grew up seeing that and, and doing just minimum wage jobs. Right. And so my ethos was always you know, work my butt off so that I can never worry about that and worry about money and worry about, you know, paycheck to paycheck and whether you're going to actually ever, you know, pay rent or even have enough food to eat, you know, and I remember getting kicked out of several homes when I was a kid, you know, and that leaves a mark on you. And so for me, watching my parents, you know, suffer all like that really gave me a drive to be entrepreneurial, but also work my butt off to be able to 
make a difference in the world and, and really never have to, you know, face that myself or, you know, have my kids have to face that. So I've always been an entrepreneur ever since I, you know, was in high school. I used to play a lot of tennis and I started a little racket restringing business to restring people's tennis rackets. And then when I got to college, I was working three jobs, teaching tennis, restringing rackets for people. And once I got out of college, it was the same thing. Even though I had a degree in mechanical engineering, I was working an engineering job. I actually started a photography business because I, cre um, I, I developed a passion for photography uh, by accident, actually. I had never considered myself an artist at all, but I knew that I loved it. I was, you know, finding a lot of joy in it. And just like most photographers, you, you take a bunch of pictures and eventually somebody says, hey, you do a pretty good job. Take pictures of my family, take a picture of my kids. Um, and one thing led to another. And so I started a photography business. And from then on, I was really hooked on trying to create a second stream of income to supplement my engineering job. Because from day one, when I started my engineering job, I knew that that wasn't a long term path for me to always work for somebody else. So, um, and so I transitioned after, honestly, after 10 years of building that photography business, I ended up closing it down. And then um, I took about a year or two off from entrepreneurship and then looking for my next opportunity. And I met this guy on an airplane, actually on the way to Mexico. And he and I sat next to each other and we started talking about he was opening a Smoothie King. Mm. And he actually was opening his first Smoothie King and he was a professor at um, University of Houston. And so we kept in touch and within a year's time, we started talking a lot more and I really expressed interest in opening a Smoothie King myself. And he offered me an opportunity where I can buy 50% into his business and we'd be partners. And so it was a really great opportunity because I didn't have to open one from scratch. And, you know, with my initial investment right away, I was, the, the store was already profitable. So like I earned money right away from the business as an owner, instead of having to, you know, when you build up a new business from the ground up, it usually takes three, four, five months before you actually get out of the red and actually turn a profit. But the store was already, you know, going and, and already had a, a solid staff. So I got to be able to jump in, learn from, you know, from a established seasoned owner about how to actually operate a business really, really well. And so within a year's time from that, we opened our second Smoothie King. And, and then after um, doing that, the beautiful thing about this business was he and I maybe spent four hours a week total yeah. in the business. And we were generating just ridiculous amounts of revenue in the business. The revenues were thirty to $50,000 a month in revenue. And uh, obviously that's not all profit, but... Right. Uh, once we opened our second store, that doubled. And then um, so we didn't really have to spend too much money or time actually in that business because it was self-sustaining and it was just making sure that we managed the managers and making sure that, um, you know, we hired really well um, and empowered our people to really do a good job. And we had an amazing staff. And so from there, I transitioned into uh, doing real estate investing and I went uh, and learned uh, from some coaches and mentors and started a real estate investing and flipping business where I was wholesaling a bunch of deals every month as well as fixing and flipping deals in Houston. And then I had a business partner in that as well. And, and then after about two, three years of that, we kind of got burnt out, honestly. We were working way too hard, made a lot of money, but we were just burnt out because we were working 60, 80 hours a week making you know, forty or sixty thousand dollars a month in profits, but we were just so stressed out that my my business partner actually suffered a stroke oh, from shit. the stress. And he was oh, forty five years old. Like having a stroke at forty five is that's not great, right? So you know, I decided that I needed to walk away from this business because A, the stress, B, we built a business so that we can improve our lifestyle. And that was not the life that it ended up being. It was a, a, a job and a business that ended up being 
way more stressful than even than a regular job. And, and it wasn't about helping people anymore. It became about making money. Mm. And when that happened, I was like, this is not aligned with what I want anymore. And so I ended up deciding to walk away from that business, handing the keys over to him and saying, Hey, you know what? I want to find something that's more impactful, more meaningful, something that really speaks to my heart and soul and not just make a ton of money. And so I transitioned into being a business coach to help others realize their dream and being able to help people eventually escape their nine to five because everybody starts their business while they're working on another job and they struggle a lot. And because they don't a, know how to the skills of entrepreneurship, but also the mindsets that, that kind of hold them back. So that's what uh, brings me here today. Yeah. Wow. Very, very, very interesting. I want to dive into uh, back to your, you said you worked a job at, at some point in your transition, you were working a job. What was that like? And was the transition easy for you? Like, was that transition? Um, easy I actually you? worked a job for many, many years. Okay. Um, I worked uh, as an engineer for, you know, 10 years while I was building my photography business. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are hating their jobs. And so they, you know, they, they do everything they can to start a business, then quit as soon as they can. I didn't have that problem. I actually really loved my engineering job. I was in oil and gas. I was doing product development and research and development for um, oil and gas services companies. And so I got to travel all over the world, uh, working on some really amazing projects, um, got to travel internationally all the time. And I was very autonomous in what I got to do every day. And I won some industry awards for uh, best drilling technologies award. I got 10 patents under my name. So I actually really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. So I didn't, you know, I didn't have a, like a burning desire to like quit right away. So like a lot of people. Um, and so for me, it was making great money, doing my photography business, filling up passion, and then also really enjoying my job and traveling the world on the company's dime actually. So yeah, it, it was good. So it's honestly probably it would, it's, honestly in your position, it might have been like harder to leave the job because you liked it so much versus the people who yeah you get know their what? Job and I, I yeah it, I, I wasn't like in a hurry all the time to quit because frankly I got to do what I want. Um, the bosses trust me to do what I need to do, and I got to work on some really cool projects and had some amazing experiences. And so for me, um, I think with any job or any I think there's always a, a, a time for you to kind of, you know, hang it up and walk away. And that was really at the end of 2009. Um, the whole world's economy was kind of crumbling down and there was a lot of change and flux going on in, in the company itself that uh, uh, a lot of people were getting laid off as well as management changes that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. That I, at, at that point, I was like, you know, what? I'm, I'm more than comfortable to be able to walk away from this. And at that point, it was for me a personal decision mm. to just say I wasn't enjoying the environment anymore. Uh, and not so much like, oh, I need to quit. You know, I need to escape my nine to five, yeah. as they always say, right? So, yeah. Well, I think most people want to quit either because they don't like the, the culture of the company. Two, they, I think that's probably one of the main reasons is the, the culture or they're just not making enough money. But so yeah. you help uh, entrepreneurs transition from, uh, or you, you help employees transition to entrepreneurship, helping them, helping them start their own business. Um, yeah. And so when you spoke about like not like wanting to work your job anymore, I've always had the thought in my head, I need to quit my job to start my business. You know what I mean? Kind of all in mentality approach. But when we talked before this podcast, you said that was a not a great idea. Can you walk me through, like, can you, can you share, like, why that isn't a good idea for people who are like, man, I need, just need to quit my job and go all in on my business and just take the risk? Yeah, so for me, so here's the thing that, that what I find, it, what happens with most entrepreneurs, okay? So I think the reason that some people kind of preach about, and, and this sounds, so business isn't always as romantic as it. It, it really sounds right because everybody's like, oh, I quit my job and I went all in. And what you realize is that the job itself has a lot of pros in it, right? So one thing you have to 
think about in your business is the reason that you are having a job in the first place because it helps you pay your bills, right? Correct. And when you start a business, it takes a while for you to actually start earning money. And some people just don't quite understand that, right? So they think that if they start a business and they quit and go all in, that they start generating money right away to, you know, to eclipse, you know, their bills, right? So if you make enough money to cover your bills, then maybe that's not a bad thing. But unfortunately for a lot of people, when they start a new business, it takes them six, eight months before they start making enough money to get any kind of momentum and enough and maybe even longer for you to actually make enough to cover all your bills and be comfortable to be able to, you know, be able to pay your bills so that you're not stressing every day. What I found is that when you are stressed and you're not sure if you can pay your bills and you're not making rent um, and you don't have enough food to eat, it's really hard to be creative. Like mm. you're, you're just stressed all the time. And one thing that I have realized is that your job actually gives you funds to be able to support this new business, right? So you can, like for me, in my photography business, I injected like the first, say, $500 to get a camera and get, you know, one or two lenses. And how would I do that if I didn't have a job? Like, how would I get a camera to start my business, right? Because there's a certain amount of initial capital investment you need to make in certain businesses. If you're a coach, maybe not so much, but like, if you start any kind of other business, you have to have some kind of money to be able to start. Correct. And if you don't have that money to continue to feed a little bit all the time and pay your bills, you don't have any, like, you know, every business needs some seed capital, right? And so your job actually is a really good way to do that. And so don't quit that, that lifeline until you actually make enough money to um, pay your bills and, and cover your expenses. Another thing that uh, I see a couple of times, because I used to do a lot of real estate investing and um, people do one real estate deal, they do one fix and flip, right? And they make say $20,000 and they're like, this is awesome. I'm going to quit my job. And what they realize is a huge stark reality is when they go get that next loan to go do another fix and flip, they don't have a W-2 anymore. And so now they've become a really high risk borrower to the bank. And that job with a steady income actually makes you a less of a risk when you are borrowing money for hard money loans as well as mortgages. So if you want to buy real estate investment property that you want to hold on to for long term, one of the things they look at is if you have a W-2. But if you just quit your job because you're like, I'm going to go all in, now you have zero income and you have one Flip on the radar with one injection of cash, and that's it. And, and now I, you shot yourself in the foot, right? Yeah, and I think the—I could just be wrong, but I think the reason most people want to quit their job is because they feel like they don't have enough time to grow their business, and so they want to go. They want to free up more time to start their business. What would you say to that? I totally, un I totally appreciate the sentiment. Okay, and to me, like. What the way I think about it is, okay, so if it depends on the type of business, right? There's like, if you're opening a restaurant, right? And you need to be there for eight, 10 hours a day to even make, get it off the ground. Sure. I get that. Like that, that totally makes sense. Right. But for a lot of people, they start a small business on the side and they do it, do it, do it. And they struggle for a long time and they don't really make any money. And so like, how do you plan to pay your bills? Right. At the end of the day, you have you have expenses that you just you have to have a place to live and maybe you need to just cut down your expenses so that your monthly expenses are very low so that you can quit earlier. That may be the scenario you go with, right? But for most people, you have you heard the term if you want something done, give it to a busy person? I have heard that term. I really have. Right. And and I so, I'm gonna I'm listen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was gonna say, I believe you because I've asked several people for I think just like I was asking like my brother who doesn't really do much. And I was like, hey, can you help me? Or I think it was even a friend who doesn't have a job. I say, hey, you don't have a job. I want to pay you to do this project for me. He's like, nope, can't do it. And I was like, OK, you're not doing yeah. nothing. You don't have no you're not doing anything all day. Like and you said you needed money and you. So go ahead. 
Well, yeah, I mean, well, there's a reason why he's unemployed. I mean, right? <laughs> so here's the thing that I realized that has helped me dramatically. When I had a job, I became hyper disciplined with the little time that I had so mm -hmm. that I'm hyper focused in the two to three hours I had every evening to work on the business. Right. And so when I did that, I actually got more done in those two hours or three hours in the evenings than if I had eight hours to do the same thing. Because here's the deal. This is just human psychology is that your task, whatever it is, how little or big it is, will fill the time that you allow it. it so if you had eight hours to do, you're going to take eight hours to do it. Like, it's just the way it is. Um, very few people that I've met actually have enough discipline to say, do something, finish it in the two hours, and then have six hours to do whatever they want. It's not, it, that's usually never the case. It's usually, so for me, having the actual structure of having a job where you got to show up at eight, get home at five, and you got to be like, hit the gym, eat real quick, and then start on your business from seven to nine or seven to 10 or seven to 11, whatever you do, that's how you get that discipline muscle every day, every night to do that. And, and here's the thing that you realize is that when you make the sacrifices, because you have to give up on hanging out with your friends and drinking and watching TV and watching Netflix and all that stuff, you develop that discipline that is required to be successful in business. And by doing that every night while you have a job, that helps you hone that so much faster than if you just went all in and, you know, had eight, 10, 15 hours to do it. You don't get as much done. At least not in my experience. I've started four yeah. companies. Oh, no, that's interesting. And um, I forgot the name of the term. The, it's like an effect, but Elon Musk, Elon Musk mentioned it. He said, if you give yourself, and it happens in school too, a lot, the teacher will give you like a two weeks for two to three weeks to finish a project and you'll do it the day of. And you'll get it done. Well, the day, right? The night before. Yeah, yeah exactly. Day, or night before day of, like, you'll get it done. And the thing is, like, you don't need all that time. So like you said, that's, that's, that's actually interesting to think about. And like you said, you are creating the disciplines that you need during that time. So, hmm. I like that. I like that. Um, I like the thinking and, and process around that. Because even me, myself, like, I'm trying to start my own business. And th those thoughts go, I think, through everybody's head. Quit your job, get more time, and so on and so on. So, yeah, I, I think there are the advantages, honestly, of of having a job teaches you a lot of skills, and you're getting paid to learn some skills in it, right? And sometimes, you know, a lot of the best entrepreneurs tell you that you need to do a job that maybe you you don't have the skill in yet right so if you want to get better at sales why don't you get into a sales role so that you are learning and getting paid to learn a new skill that you eventually will need in your business right and so get paid to learn even though you may need to maybe take a salary cut a little bit but you're you're paying down your ignorance debt on somebody else's dime instead of you doing it on your own company and you making the mistakes, you're really bad on your sales calls, whatever, say you're a consultant or a coach and you make all those mistakes and you do it for six months and you make zero income on your, on your business because you're just terrible at sales. And maybe the seventh month you get it, but like if you quit your job, you may not make it to seven months. You may be so broke that you might have to go get another job again. So, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I see. When when would it be the okay the when would it be the right time to quit the job then? So like you're you start your business, it's just say you're a year or two in, you're making a little bit of money, you're finally making some money, you've created discipline. When when do you think that I mean there's probably never a right time, but when would you say would say is like a good time? Well, that's a really great question. And I actually get asked this quite a bit. And First of all, I mean, to me, this is a very personal question, right? It depends on how comfortable you are and everybody's level of quote unquote comfort is different. For me, what I say is the first metric is, can you pay your bills, right? Because if you can cover your bills, that, that makes it a lot less stressful. Second is, do you have a trajectory of momentum that's going in the right direction, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, like if I say, okay, I need, let's just say I need $10,000 a month to live, right? And now I have created three months of consistent 
you know, ten to eleven thousand dollars a month in income. And then, okay, so well, I, in in the in the track record, looking at everything that I'm doing, do I have a pattern of behavior and consistency with my business where I can say, okay, right now I'm putting in twenty hours a week and I'm making you know ten k a month. If I did double that time, will I be able to scale the income? And most people say yes. If I invest more time, reached out more, did more follow ups, absolutely. Um, and I'm really paying my bills and there's some momentum and I see some trajectory of growth in the business, then I think it's a great time to be able to leave. But the problem with a lot of people is they, they see one month of like 10 K month. They're like, all right, I'm quitting. You're like, well, that may have been a fluke, right? That, that one month may have been a blip on the radar and the next two months you make, may make nothing. And so until you get your lead generation system, really consistent where you're generating consistent income in your business, where you're starting to grow and grow and grow, then I say it's a good time for you to actually leave. But until then, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't be comfortable with leaving just yet. So. Three months. Okay. Three months of rent or three months of not rent, but three months of your bills paid. Um, okay. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, to me, it, it gives you enough of a, a, a enough data points, right? Because, you know, one data point isn't really much of a trend, right? So if you have tr a good trend and two of them is really not a trend, a three points is enough to, to actually create a line and say, okay, there's obviously a pattern of growth here because two months could have been like, okay, you know, you can think one month you made 10, the next month you made 20. Is that truly something that's going to go, say, 30 next month? What if someone, maybe, maybe yeah, not. What if someone comes to you and says, "Trunk, I have uh, I have like twenty thousand dollars saved. I, like that, that isn't would that be an, the right time to quit my business?" Again, not my business, you, not my business, my job. Sorry, would that be the right time to quit? Say my that job? again. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, what if someone comes to you and says, "Like Trung, I want to start my own business. Um, I saved up twenty thousand dollars. The business is, is like is not really going to cost much on startup, and it'll, it'll free up all my time. Could could that be like?" Could that qualify as a way to stop to quit my job and start my business? Well, so for what I say is, so there's there's two there's really two nuances to this, right? Okay. For me, I would say if you haven't started your business yet, don't quit your job because you don't have another source of income. If you started a, a business and you started making a little bit of money and you you do have a runway of you know 4 to 6 months of expenses then maybe it's not a bad idea but again it's it's personal right like if you have $15,000 of expenses a month then probably not right but That's if right. you're like hey I'm a, you know I live with my parents and my monthly expenses are 1000 bucks you may have like you know a year and a half's worth of runway to do it but for me I, I wouldn't recommend you quitting right away. I mean, I, I think it's great to have a savings and it took you a while to get there, but having a, a job actually gives you a lot of discipline. And, 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 and here's the thing when, if you don't have a business yet, I've started a bunch of companies. Some of them failed miserably, right? So if you haven't started your business, I wouldn't say quit yet because A, you may realize you, you do it and you don't like it, right? And you may pivot to something else and people do that all the time. And so for me, I say, give yourself three months, build this business, get it to the point where you start making a little bit of money. And if this is like, Hey, I, I want to go all in. I really love it. It's really what I thought it would be because we all have this romanticized version of business. And unfortunately it really never lives up to that romantic feeling of what we think business is. For example, I'll give you an example here in photography. So I had a photography business for like 11 years and it's 80% business, 20% photography. So you're not like on set all the time, shooting these models that so you're not, you know, and you're just shooting all the time. It's like, no, most of the time you're bookkeeping, you're sitting behind the computer doing editing, you're, you know, you know, retouching images, you are, doing reach outs, you're writing post social posts, you are 
taking care of your packaging and putting orders together. It's a lot of business. It's a lot of admin stuff. So it's not as, oh my God, I just, just walk on to a set and then everything is getting taken care of and I just shoot and then I walk away and then I just go to the next shoot. You know, it's very little bit of the actual thing you're doing and, you know, it's 80, 90% of actually just doing business. And so um, some people don't enjoy that. They realize it's like, this is not what I thought it would be. Just like anybody that gets a job coming out of college, they're like, oh, I want to do this marketing or I want to be engineering and they do a year of engineering. They're like, this is not what I thought it was at all. Like, I don't enjoy sitting behind a desk doing 3D modeling and they quit. So for me, try it out, start doing whatever it is and see if you like it. Because a lot of people don't. <laughs> yeah, business. And, yeah. And, and, or they realize they're terrible at it and they don't want to do it. Correct. So do you find anyone you work with? Um, I feel, I think Alex Hermosi said this. I, I think multiple people say this, but I know Alex Hermosi said this specifically and I watched his video. So basically like you have this, it's like a, a, a trough that goes up and down. So like you, you got your business idea and you're like, yo, business idea. And then you finally like start realizing how hard it is. So you go to the bottom. So it's like, now you're at the bottom and then value of despair, the value yep. of despair. <laughs> and then now you're like, I got to start another business. It's this one sucks. The next business is going to be better. Do you find anyone in that, in that um, trough? And maybe have you even found yourself there before? And if so, how, how did you get, um, how did you change your mindset to, to, to break the cycle? Cause that's what it is. Well, so again, I mean, like I don't do that anymore because I understand that it always looks glamorous at the beginning. And then, then the hard work hits you in the face. Right. And I learned that, you know, in the photography business, you know, I did 10 years of it, you know, and the first couple of years sucked, right? I was just like, I'm going to go shoot. I'm going to go shoot these headshots with these models, da, da, da. And it was never that, right? And so for me, I've gotten past that because I'm a seasoned entrepreneur. But yes, I do see, I hear from other entrepreneurs that not necessarily my clients, because by the time they come to me, they're like, hey, I really want to do this. I'm struggling in the business and I need help, mm. right? So they're not, I'm ready for another shiny object, right? Those people don't actually go for a coaching because they're already looking onto their next thing, right? Because the people that I, I work with and I, that, that want to work with me is they're like, hey, this was exciting. Now it's really hard, but you know what? I'm going to stick with it and I'm really going to get help because I know I want to stay with it. And now I want to find somebody that knows what they're doing to help me build this business. So they're, they're in the valley of despair and they're like, holy shit, this is hard. What you're talking about is those people just bail and then go to find something more glamorous because that's exciting and that's what they just keep doing. It's a constant shiny job object syndrome, right? So and if people yeah, are in the valley of despair, they can reach out to you for help, correct? Absolutely. You know, that's this is where entrepreneurs all face, right? They, they, they go into there and then they face a lot of problems in their business because a they may not know what they're doing b it's always harder than what you imagine it would be and sometimes they're doing a lot of things to stay busy right they're like what are you doing i'm so busy and i'm like <laughs> busy doing what <sighs> and so they mistake being active with making progress right you've heard that right yes. just because you're busy doesn't mean you're actually making any forward momentum but the, the big thing that what I've found with photographers, I mean, with entrepreneurs is that they know that there's a lot to do. The problem is they don't know how to prioritize what to do first. Right. And so to me, what I, I look at is a, what's their mindset that, that they have coming into the business B, do they have the core fundamentals of what is required of a successful business that is growing predictably and sustainably? And so when you know those, you actually can understand what you need to be working on at the right time, right? Because you can, like when they start out, whether they first do, I'm going to go get a logo. I'm going to get a website. I'm going to get some branding colors. And they spend a month doing that. And you're like, you don't have any business. Nobody cares who you are. Just sell some stuff. Like see if you can actually prove your concept or whatever you're trying to do, it can make money. And they spend too much time doing stuff that, aren't really 
you know, right for say in their infancy stage of their business, right? So it's kind of like doing steps four, five, and six when you haven't completed step one yet and, and they're busy doing it, but that's not where they're at in their business, right? And this is really bad when you work in a corporate environment where you're like, oh yeah, so I work in marketing. So I want to do this just like I did in my company. I was like, well, your company has been around for 50 years and they have like a $10 million budget and they actually have a market presence already. So like what they're doing in their marketing is for a mature audience and a mature brand. You, you don't have any customers. <laughs> Nobody nope. knows who you are. You can't do the same things as a Nike does. It just doesn't work. We want to, but and we so, can't. But it, it just doesn't have the same thing, right? It just doesn't have like the things that Coca-Cola can do that have been around for 150 years. You don't do as a brand when you first start. And it's the same thing with you know a lot of other tasks in the business is they're doing things out of sequence. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So you mentioned beliefs during there. Um, what what are the top skills and beliefs? Well, let's, well, let's start. Let's start with skills. What are the top skills someone needs to go from employee working a job? Maybe they never started a business in their entire life, and they're like, "I want to start my business." I've actually I just watched this podcast or I watched another motivational video. I want to start a business, but maybe they don't have the skills. What would you say the top five skills are that someone needs to be Ooh, a successful great business? Great question. Um. So I'll, I'll preface all that by saying the business is honestly 80% psychology and 20% execution. Okay. And most people will tell you that because here's the deal. Uh, when you first start as an employee uh, and you shift into an entrepreneur, the biggest stumbling block that I found with people is that they think like an employee, right? And they think in the fact that, so if you get a job, you are very good at say one thing, you are an accountant, right? Or you're an engineer. So what you do is you sit at your desk, you do that one task, you get really, really good at it, right? And you are not incentivized to make a lot of mistakes because you make a lot of mistakes as an accountant, you can get fired. Correct. That's just the nature of the job. They're like, we have Susan, go take your place. She doesn't make mistakes. You go do that. As a employee, you think I only do this and somebody else takes care of everything else, right? And as an entrepreneur, you're not a specialist in really anything. You have to be very much a generalist in all the things you do. So the problem with a lot of people is like they don't have the skills, right? I mean, they don't know how to market. They don't know how to do sales. They don't um, how to do social media for their business. And so the number one skill is changing and shifting the mindset from an employee to an entrepreneur. And that, namely, the first thing is your relationship with risk, mm. right? Is you've heard in Silicon Valley, they say fail fast, right? You've heard fail fast, fail yeah. often so that you can actually pay down your ignorance debt. Like Hormozzi says, right? You got, you have ignorance debt. You got to pay. Everybody's got to pay it. And until you do, you're just learning, right? And so, so the first thing is shifting your mindset to saying, you know what, now I need to not just bury my head and just focus on the one thing I'm really good at, right? You have to be able to know at least a certain level of competency in sales, in marketing, in accounting, and you don't need to like do amazing, perfect books, but you need to be able to track your money, right? You need to be able to like, okay, how much money do I have? How much time is coming in? What does a profit mean? Um, so basic accounting terms, like, you know, what is profit versus revenue? Some people actually don't know that, which is mind boggling, but like, they're like, oh, I made this amount of money. I'm like, well, how much did it cost you to make that money? And they're like, so, so what was actually, did you walk home with? Yeah. And they're like, oh crap, I, I didn't make any money. And I'm like, right. <laughs> and so another thing that I find that is that people are, that are really what we call artists, right? They have their relationship with money and asking people for money. And basically it's skills. So I'll break it down into two things. A, having the ability to ask for money and ask what you want. 
right? So the problem with a lot of photographers I saw was that they're really good at taking pictures. They're like, I just want to take really good pictures. I'm like, but I don't like, you know, going into sales consultation and telling them how much I charge because I'm like, it's kind of cringy to me. Yep. I don't want to ask them to charge them that much. I'm like, well, if you don't want to take care of that part of your business, either A, hire a salesperson or B, just work for somebody else who you just shoot all day and have them take care of the business side of the business. But if you want to have your business, you need to learn how to ask for money because that's how your business survives. That's the lifeblood of your business, right? Cash and cash flow. Um, so have to learn how to do that. B is the skill of persuasion, right? Because when you are building a business, you have to be able to enroll people in your vision and in your business and your, what you stand for. Every minute that you're talking, you're either enrolling in somebody into your vision and business and who you are as a person or unenrolling them by saying bad things that just people don't resonate with. So for me, it's like, how do you become better at persuasion? Because a lot of people just don't have that skill because Maybe they don't, they weren't in sales in their job. Maybe they're doing something completely different, like maybe accounting or marketing. They are really good at graphic design. They're really good at creating web pages. But when they talk about their business, they're either not very persuasive or they're not very, you know, very firm in what they're saying so that people are just like, are you sure you know what you're doing? Even though they could be very, very competent, they may not be able to communicate that really well. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Yes. Yeah. Uh, another skill I would say is the skill of communication. So that kind of is a subset of, of persuasion. Persuasion to me feels like you have to influence somebody to want to uh, want to work with you or they're like, wow, that seems really awesome. Like how do I enroll? Right. Uh, the other one is that's a part of communication where you need to be able to tell people what you do. A lot of people do not necessarily have that skill yet. And it's a skill just like, you know, going to speech class to be able to speak to people, speak people well, and so that you can actually tell them what you do. Because if you can't tell people what you do, who is if you're the only employee, right? And if a business that is an amazing photographer, but he doesn't tell anybody about it, he's still going to be a starving artist. Done. Right? Business is done. Yeah, because you're too shy to tell people. Right? Um, what am I at now? Four or five? I, I, I think, can't remember I think at this point. Surpassed five. <laughs> I think we're like six. So, no, so those sure. are some amazing yeah. skills. And so like you're basically saying, well, don't you don't need to be like an expert in all those skills, but you do need to have some basic understanding of all those. Yeah. Yeah. So, so here's the thing that that people say is there's like two schools of philosophy, right? There's one school of philosophy where they say, you know, just double down on your strengths, right? Yep. And I was like, well, that's great, but when you first start the business, the business overall has to, you know, have all the skills in the business, right? And so you have to have somebody that is in marketing, in sales. In, in, in writing copy, in, in accounting, in, in making sure that you have the vision of the business to make sure everybody's doing the same thing, right? In terms of management. When you are first starting the business, it's just you, right? And so you kind of have to have that skill set under your belt to a level, certain level of competency so that when you do say hire, like, hey, I'm not really great at sales. I hire some closers to say, you know, close for me. But if you don't have your certain level of competency, you do not know what good looks like to be able to hire it out. Mm. And a lot of people, they're so quick to delegate and scale. You hear that all the time. Yep. Oh, I'm going to scale. I'm like, I'm going to delegate. It's like, yeah, but how do you know they're any good if you have no skill in it? You don't know what they're doing they hire, well or bad. Yeah, they hire before they even actually built, like before they've actually built it out in their company. For instance, like a, they want to they, they just don't know what they're doing in that area. So they hire somebody else and they're like, oh yeah, just go ahead and do it. And then they just turn their head and they're like, I want to focus on the, my zone of genius. And I was like, well, that's great. But how do you know they're even competent, right? Yeah, correct. And you don't know what like good looks like yet because you don't have that skill or you don't, you don't need to be the best at it, but you need to have a certain level of competency, especially at the beginning of a business. So 
Yeah, I like that. Um, I want to touch back a tad bit earlier. You mentioned on uh, something about Alex Hermosa and you said risks. The the entrepreneur is going to be ex- as successful as his risk. Can you t- can you dive deep or like a little bit into that for me? Because I'm kind of curious, like you uh, what you were what you meant by that. So I mean, at the end of the day, like every entrepreneurial venture is it involves a certain amount of risk, right? You're right. you're doing something that that you've never done before. Right. And so if you stay in your comfort zone all the time, you a never going to learn anything new. You're never going to try a new skill and how you expect you to grow the business. If you have, you need 10 skills in this business, like, you know, accounting, marketing, sales, da, 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 right. You have all these 10 skills. You need a hat, like these 10 hats you need to wear. Right. And if you're not willing to take a risk on yourself to learn these new skills and build out the business, you're going to be sitting there and struggling in every aspect of that business because you're not taking a leap of faith on yourself and on a new concept. If you stay in the safe zone all the time, you're never going to grow, right? I mean, anything you learn, you got to, it's your relationship with failure. That's really what it is, right? And you have to say, hey, you know what? You either win or you learn, right? You don't fail. But a lot of people, they get one knockdown and they're like, oh, I knew it wasn't for me. And then they quit. Right. It's just like if you talk to a parent and the kid is trying to learn to walk and he falls over and over and then he stops. He's like, you know, Johnny, you're just not a walker, buddy. No, you do it until you freaking learn how to walk. Right. You say, just keep at it until you learn. Yes. But the problem with the people as they grow into an adult they get so comfortable with not failing that often because they do the same thing that's safe and they do the same thing that's predictable all the time. And that's what they're paid for. They paid good money, you know, in their jobs. And then they go into an area where you have to fail because you don't know what you're doing, but they're not comfortable doing that. So they, they never go all in, in their business. Mm. And so they don't take those risks that they need to, to be able to learn and grow. And that's usually the issue. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to. I was, I, yeah, yeah, I was curious about that. So you mentioned our, the top skills. What would you say the mi- the mindset that it takes? The mindset that it really takes to to make this shit happen. Well, uh, for me, the big things is a lot of times once we get them out of the employee mindset and start thinking as an entrepreneur, right? And then we give them the skills to say, Hey, okay. So every day I want you to say, do five outreaches to some of your your warm audience or find warm outreach where you maybe call five people that are in your network that may be happy to help you. Right. That would be like, um, that are your champions that are like, Hey, you know, I I know and like Marcos and I'd be doing anything to help them. Right. So you would call your friend up. What, is the next big stumbling block for people is their mindset about worthiness and their mindset about fear of failure and fear Mm. of judgment, right? They know what they need to do, yet they don't do it. You've heard this before, right? There's a lot of people that know what they're doing. And then I go coach them. I said, Hey, all right. So uh, we talked to you about saying, I want you to do 10 DMS to people that are in your network from your Facebook group. And I wanted you to do five outreaches to your thing. How did that go? Well, you know, I was just really busy and da, 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 da. There's all these excuses, but what it really boils down to is there's a little, the relationship either with failure, meaning like they don't want to be like, what would my parents think? What would my colleagues think by posting something on the social media about their new business? It's all that. It's like, what is holding them back from actually doing the things they know they should be doing when they actually know what they need to do, yet they don't do it, right? And so for us and what I work on is like look at some of those blocks because it's very rarely them not knowing what to do. It's kind of like the, the, the analogy of losing weight. We all freaking know how to lose weight. Like that's not a mystery to us. Right. But let's go for a run. You have people not right. Go, just go for a run, go for a every run, day. maybe not eat every cheeseburger every day. Right. You know? Uh, so like the, the, 
the skills and the knowledge of how to do it is not what's lacking. It's either the motivation, right? You, you don't have a good why to kind of keep pushing you through the tough times, or you have other things that are holding you back emotionally or whatever it is, whether it's fear of failure. So you just don't do it. So you don't ever fail. Or uh, you've heard this, Oh, it's not perfect yet. I don't want to do it because it's not perfect. Well, that's honestly fear of failure, procrastination disguised as perfectionism. Mm. And I see that all the time. And I was guilty of that too. Right? So it's all these different excuses. People come up with why they're not doing what I told them to do when they know they need to do it. So it's the mental blocks that, that hold you back from the judgment, right? And the failure, because here's the thing. Most people don't have any issues with failing quietly at home. Like they do it and they're like, ah, oh, I just fell on my face. It's fine. But when they get into public, it's that fear of judgment, right? It's not the failure of the part. It's actually fear of judgment, which is kind of what I've realized. Right, because if nobody sees it, you don't really care. But when you, you know, you put it on social, suddenly it becomes like 10 times more important. Right. And that's why everybody and, lives and, this happy life on social media. They only posting their what's going good, but no one's ever posting what's going bad because, because of that reason right there. Well, absolutely. And it's, yeah, you know, um, I mean, that's a whole other two hour discussion yeah. <laughs> in and of itself. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Well, no, this has been, this has been great conversation so far. Um, so in a nutshell, like I know we've talked about how you help entrepreneurs and you help them grow their business and, and stuff like that. But in a nutshell, who do you help? Like who are, who exactly are you looking to help and can you help? Yeah. So for me, my, my, my ideal client really is somebody that is, working a successful job and they're a career professional, right? And they have suddenly a feeling in themselves that an, an, an inner restlessness where they realize they want more out of life. They've either gone through some personal development and they're like, you know what? I really want more fulfillment in my life. This job making good money is not enough anymore. They want something that is more impact, something more fulfilling. And so they start a business and then they realize very quickly that they don't have the skills and the success that they have in their business, I mean, the success they had in their career just doesn't really translate into a successful business, just for all the reasons that we talked about earlier. Yep. Skills, mindset, things like that. And then now they're like, okay, this is really a lot harder and I'm spinning my wheels for the last couple of months. I really need help. Who can help me? And so this is when I am working with people, usually within the first 18 months to two years of their business, right? Somebody that's really a, a service-based business. I have a lot of, lot of experience in service-based businesses. I don't really do too much on you know product-based businesses where there's a lot of logistics, inventory. I don't really know that stuff that well. And so for me, it's service-based businesses, people that are ready to invest in their business, ready to invest in themselves, to you really actually grow their business and build a business that they fall in love with so that eventually they can actually build into something that could really support the lifestyle that they truly want, to have the time freedom and, and, and the financial freedom to really leave their job. And say, so, say uh, someone's watching this podcast and that's them. Where can, where, can they, where can they reach you best at? Where's the best place that they can get in, in communication and contact with you? Or learn more about um, uh, what, like, learn more. Like, say they're they're interested in learning more. Yeah, so I'm um, active on social media. You can find Trung, uh, my first name, Trung, uh, Q H U I N H. So there's a Q between the first and last name there. Uh, I'm active on Instagram as well as my website at trunghuen uh, co. And yeah, so you can book a, a session with me and. Um, we can see if there's something we can do to help you out. Perfect. And uh, for for everyone who does who doesn't know, can you kind of sh- like? Um, I know I didn't do this in the beginning, and I'm still working on this on my podcast. But like, tell them what you've done. Tell them some of the wins and successes you've had. Yeah. So you know, I have helped some uh, real estate investors actually um, go from 
not really having any wholesale deals in their pipeline to having four to five a month of wholesaling, flipping deals. I've worked with, um, businesses that are like the, a, 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 a guy actually, so I work in all over the United States, right? So it's all virtual. So one of the clients I have is he owns a chimney repair business. And so we were working on his SOPs, building it out so he can really scale and helping him grow the revenue, build out his marketing, a uh, referral business side, um, his, um, basically really dialing up his, his marketing where he can actually generate like double as many leads as he had, was before without any ad spend, mm, okay. which was super cool yep. to be able to increase your revenue, increase your sales consultations and spend absolutely no money. So, yeah. So some of those are the kind of the things that I can help because I've seen so many different types of businesses now that when I look at a business, I'm like, oh, okay, I can totally see right away. Like just like anybody else that has been a master at something or like put in your 10,000 hours. Um, once you see it, you're like, okay, I can see right away, like where the holes are in the business. Amazing. Very, very amazing. One, I appreciate you for hopping on this podcast, taking the time out of your day. Um, really appreciate it. And, uh, hopefully looking forward to have you back on the show again, uh, maybe in the next year. Fantastic. Yeah, I would love to. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah. Appreciate it. Uh -oh.